Welcome back to Building 220 at the Johnson Space Center where we ha are standing here in front of the Deep Space Habitat where the autonomous mission operations test have been going on this week and we have um, today's commander with us now, Alvin Drew. He's been uh, working inside the Deep Space Habitat, um, working with some comm delay issues, right? Yes. So tell us how these tests are going for you. They're going fine. We've done two tests so far, um, one with about a oh, 50 second comm delay, mm -hmm. uh, which puts about maybe 10 million miles away from Earth. Uh, this one puts us about, uh, this one we have about a five minute convoy, which puts us at maybe the closest point of Mars. And uh, it becomes significantly harder to work with mission control, uh, especially when you're used to working in near real time with them with very oh. minimal delay, uh, to tell them something and you have to wait 10 minutes for a reply back from them. So how are you testing that out? What, what kind of things are you doing with the convoy? We're running just normal operations for a bit where you do your normal things and there's, there's certain coordinations where you, they want data, they want you to read something and give it back to them and, mm -hmm. and there may be some, some fine tuning they want to give you, you know, and they really want you to look at this instead of that and so now you do a lot more just guessing uh -huh. what they wanted. Okay, they might have wanted these other three things so I'll give them all three of them rather than have them have this 30 minute exchange while they get that one piece mm -hmm. of information out. Um, where it gets tougher is when things don't go exactly as planned. Uh, when pumps shut off when they're not supposed to, lights suddenly cut off when they're not supposed to and and you've got a set of procedures which get you about 80% of the way there, but if it's more tricky than that, it's more than like two failures acting against each other, well, then you really need all the backrooms and mission control to really look at these things tough, not quick. And so they may have you help them troubleshoot. You know, turn this off and see what happens, turn this back on, just like you would if you were working on any complex piece of equipment, just go out and dope it out. And that's where it gets to be really long and drawn out because every one of those steps now waits at least 10 minutes. So you're hearing from mission control, okay, turn this off, they say it, you hear it five minutes later, you turn it off and let them know that you turn it off and then it's another five minutes, so 10 minutes for them for them to hear that you've turned it off, right? And then and be able to tell you. Off, yes. mm -hmm. And then be able to tell you, okay, that fixed it or more likely, no, that didn't fix it, now I'll go turn off this and it's the whole thing again, yes. right? Okay. And so what happens is you, like me, your attention span just isn't that long. Uh -huh. So I've wandered off to something else and they'll call up and they'll go, well, that didn't fix it. Well, didn't fix what? <laughs> I'm, I'm already after reading the comic book, so I go, you know, refresh me on what you're talking about. Uh, yes. What's been the hardest thing so far? That has been the hardest part is that it's that sometimes we're having d different conversations. I'll be talking to them about something that's that I'm working on right now, and I'm getting a transmission back from them on something that happened 10 minutes ago. Uh -huh. And so, like we, it's easy to step on top of each other on the radio communications because you're you don't have that real-time feedback mm -hmm. and so you'll stop your communication and of course they're on the ground wondering why you stopped talking to them in mid-sentence <laughs> <laughs> so those kind of things go on that, that's about the toughest part yeah well you've been in space so a couple of shuttle missions under your belt right yes. so how do you how does it compare how does how do you I guess see that it would change things if you had had to deal with that on a space shuttle mission in a space shuttle mission especially it's something as complex as the the space station buildup you almost had cameras right over your shoulder. I mean, you were, you were right there in, in, in the modules with you. Mm -hmm. You're talking with them because there's a lot of things going on and you really want to make sure you get them all right. Uh, somewhere in here with these time blades, you have to have that, that, that zen moment where you just go, they can't talk to me real time. They mm -hmm. have to just go and press ahead with this and hope it's the right thing. And if it's not too critical or something that, that 10 minutes now they can go back and correct. Uh, but you have to just suddenly just say mission control has a kind of a bigger picture function, okay, that we're all kind of heading down the right path. They're not into the very the, the, the nuts and bolts, the ones and zeros of your daily operation. It can't be because they're always several minutes behind you. Right. Well, you think, you know, you wait a few minutes to hear the answer. That doesn't sound like that big a deal, but that mm -hmm. changes the mission, doesn't it? It can if you're going to wait five minutes for every single answer. Uh -huh. uh, just, you know, I've just got a stack of things I'm going to go do, and I'm telling them, I'm doing this now, I'm doing that now, doing that now, doing that. And if you have a problem with it, you know, 10 minutes now, here, okay, I wish you'd, you know, put the switch back to A instead of B, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not going to wait for them unless there's something extremely critical. Uh -huh. uh, uh, for them to come back with an answer saying that's yeah, okay or that's not okay. Uh, so it means I've got to have a certain level of more insight into what I'm doing. I just can't blindly throw switches uh, because I just need to know that this isn't going to hurt something or I have a better set of confidence because if I'm waiting again, again everything slows down dramat dramatically. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, I guess, I mean, us kind of getting a good feel for this is pretty critical mm -hmm. to being able to explore further out in the future. Would you say that's Yes, now part of the thing is that the crews are never going to be as smart as mission control. I mean, as much as I like to think I'm as smart as a flight <laughs> controller, I'm, I'm not as smart as anyone flight controller. I'm certainly not as smart as five or six flight controllers, and they outnumber us. <laughs> you know, they, they are smarter than us, but they outnumber us as well. So we're, we're outclassed and outnumbered to begin mm -hmm. with. And so how do you 
reproduce that in really in critical situations. So we haven't done anything that's really critical yet. Nothing's caught fire in here. I uh -huh. uh, suspect it's going to in the next run. Uh, so how do you, what do you do is, can you have a virtual mission control? Can you use artificial intelligence? Can you capture mission control's philosophy, their culture, their flight rules, all the things that a, a flight director would decide given all that information that they're getting from their flight controllers and their flight rules. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think the goal of this particular exercise is, is can we capture it? I mean, Autonomous Mission Operations, AMO, is trying to do just that. And I don't think we have any ambition that we're gonna get there on the first try or even the second try. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have to start somewhere. You have to grow this thing and have mission controllers work with it, make it smarter, let it learn, and then it may be something that we all have confidence in. So when we are, five, 10, 15 light minutes away from Earth, and this thing says, I'm gonna shut down your backup you know, hydraulic system. You go, okay, there's probably a good reason for that, because mm -hmm. it, it just wouldn't do that on its own unless it's playing how. Uh -huh. Well, do you feel like you're learning things and, and getting stuff out of this? Yes, quite a bit. It's, it's good to work in terms of deep space. I'm used to being in low Earth orbit, and I'm in places that are not low Earth orbit anymore, <laughs> and just thinking very different. It's a very different mindset to think that you're just not going to look out the, out of the window and see, see big blue beach ball Earth right beneath you. It, it just may be uh, a blue and gold dot out there that's the Earth-Moon system, and, wow. and trying to pick that out. So it, it's, it's, it's a, it makes you think about that, that this is very different than what we've been doing for about the last 30, 35 years. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you lived in the deep space habitat a little bit before for some of the other analog missions, right? Yes, this and the, uh, the SEV, the, uh, the rovers. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, how, you know, are we, how does it feel to be part of all this stuff that's going on to get us ready to go out? It's very cool. It feels like I'm living in the middle of a science fiction novel some days. The, the, the conversations I have at my desk are sometimes very surreal. It's <laughs> like, oh, let's talk about you know, logistics concepts for when we're going out on the far side of the moon. Like, okay, this is today. You know, we're, we're at most about 400 miles above the Earth, and we're talking about going 400,000 miles away from the Earth as if it's something going on right now. Mm -hmm. And we're having you know, heated debates about you know, how many ships come up per month and how many tons we need to bring back and how much electricity you need. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're in those gory details as if it's something happening right now. Like, okay, this is not happening right now. It's, we're planning that we're gonna get there, but it's just at the step back a few times ago. <laughs> it's, it's kind of disappointing to walk out of the office and back into reality on some days. <laughs> but it's a nice office to come to, right? Yes, yes it is. All right, well, thanks so much for talking to us. We really appreciate Absolutely, it. Absolutely, Brandon.